Okay, uh, I'm going to do this while uh, things are still vaguely in mind at least. Um, this is, I have it all still set up and we'll probably play more of it. Uh, but this is sort of my uh, views on Gloomhaven so far because probably a lot of people have dropped off uh, through the playthroughs. The first thing is, <laughs> most overrated game I've ever seen on BGG. Um, why? Well, putting aside any question of how whether it's a good game or not, um, half the people have rated it a 10 as if it is the best game or one of the best games out there ever for them. And that's just very, very hard for me to believe. <laughs> you know? Um, <coughs> even if you, <coughs> excuse me, even if you take uh, BGG's standard of always willing to play, it feels exceedingly difficult to believe that uh, so large <coughs> proportion <coughs> of people um, feel that way about this and not about most games, right? You know, <laughs> so there's definitely this rating inflation thing going on at BGG where they take a look and say, well, you know, I like Gloomhaven better than I like Agricola or I like Twilight Struggle or this, that, and the other. Uh, therefore, I think it should be rated higher. So I'm going to rate it a 10, you know, <laughs> to make sure that it gets above uh, the other things. I think it's better than all the other things in the top 10 or whatever. All the same, you know, uh, so that mechanism in play is causing this inflation aspect where each succeeding generation of games has to beat the score of the other games and that may involve dropping scores on other games but it also definitely involves over boosting um, the ratings on a game. Um, but why why do I think that it's kind of overrated or very overrated? Um, well, what I see about the game is that uh, even taking aside my personal foibles about it, uh, it is a similar kind of design to something like Mage Knight, which is definitely, you know, a popular and strong type of game. And this is as well, uh, where you have these cards that you get to select, you know, what you're doing and you get to plan and, and, and prepare your actions and everything. And then it's kind of neat to have the randomization going in there and the actions that the monsters are going to take is also randomized. So you don't know exactly what's going to happen. You have to prepare for it and everything. I understand all of that and that that's good. And I think the overall rating should end up a little lower, but okay. Um, it's just... You know, now there's this attempt to blow away all the other high ratings, and that's that's the problem that I see there. But uh, beyond that, yes, there's this core uh, design that's kind of neat about it, but what differentiates this from other games of that type that use kind of a modern heavy strategy type um, association uh, where, where you know, you, you have these decision-making limitations from the cards or whatever. The, the main thing that differentiates it and puts it, say, in a different class from a Mage Knight, and I, I think Mage Knight is probably the best example of something like that, is that Gloomhaven has this campaign structure to it, okay? And then it's also got the legacy aspect which is sort of meant to represent the campaign structure. Well, there's a couple of things that I find disturbing about this. Uh, the biggest is that campaign structure is very weak in story from what I've seen so far. It is basically just a way to string scenarios together. Um, the character improvement, I have a little bit of a gripe about 
the way the retirement works, the fact that, uh, you know, you're not necessarily, I don't know, you're trying to reach this goal with your character. That's not sort of an end to itself, though. It means that you get to open up another box and play another character. Um, so the only way that you actually get to explore the game completely, the way it's written to be played, which is playing through once, involves dumping your characters and getting new ones. And I think, from what I see of it, it would be almost impossible, even in four players, and I'm only going with three for the most part, well, so far, um, is that you still wouldn't make it through all the character boxes. Now, that can be a plus or a minus, because you can always rip open the other ones and play it in a non-campaign type setting afterwards. Or keep playing <laughs> the campaign with different parties or whatever, and keep filling out the world in that way. Uh, but it just it feels a, a little bit like you're not really able to see everything even with a massive campaign having been played. Uh, the second part of it, uh, the, the more important part for me about it, is that there just doesn't seem to be this massive storyline that, like, your decisions have a great effect on the world or anything. Now, again, maybe I'm missing something. I've seen some indications, you know, like military rule in Gloomhaven and stuff like that, but it just doesn't feel like the whole world changes. Um, I recently did Dungeon Degenerates, much, much smaller game. What could be played eh, probably in three or four sittings um, would it gives you much more of a, a world-shaking dynamic in terms of having a real effect on things. A different kind of game in a lot of ways, but I think that the campaign could have been written, and again, I haven't gotten very far in it, there's no question of that, but it could be uh, presented in a way where the players are more linked in a struggle that slowly reveals itself. And I just don't feel like that's happening at all. I feel like there's no real storyline to any of this. It's just excuses to get you into the dungeons and fighting. That's a big minus. Um, if that is actually the case, if it doesn't get better than this, and I'm pretty much discouraged with it to the point where I, it hasn't won me over yet, and I don't, you know, it's kind of like, well, how much more do I want to push through to get to that point? Um, if that's the case, then to me the game is actually a failure in terms of what its design intention was. Beyond that, you're paying a lot of money for a lot of scenarios, a lot of components and everything, and there's a certain level of it just keeps feeling the same each damn time. <laughs> um, there's only so much you can do with a dungeon crawl type game, and I don't feel like this is going much further than... Uh, than things like, um, I don't know what was the the old Hero Quest or whatever, uh, the old Games Workshop dungeon crawl game, where there really was nothing except the you know the the individual scenarios. You could play it as a campaign format, but it was just stringing together dungeon crawls. You know, <laughs> this doesn't feel much different from that to me, and you know. Uh, there, there were RPG. You know, there are people who play RPGs in that sort of way too, and that's fine. It's just I felt like this was going to give something much, much more significant in terms of uh, presenting you with sort of a real, uh, real choices that affected real things that affected the world in heavy ways, and they just don't. Okay, on to my personal objections. Uh, these have more to do with the design of the combat system and the cards. And I've gone over this again and again. And the problem there is that what you have is a system that intrinsically just does not feel like it's representing any kind of reality. Not even a fantasy reality. Let me make sure I'm taping. Because, crap, I'm out of video already. 
Well, we'll see what little I can get on here. But anyway, what happens is um, you're selecting actions from a set of cards. The reality behind these cards and how, you know, when you get to play them, etc., seems very gamey. And um, I've gone into detail in my particular videos about this. I don't have a lot of time to go into it here just because my batteries apparently lied to me. Um, but, you know, you, you, you take one of these special, one of these cards that has an action on it, and you can't do that same kind of action again until you've done a rest or something else has happened. Well, that kind of makes sense, except there's sort of this, uh, they're staggered in a strange way. Why is it that, you know, I can't do this particular special attack that I know how to do, you know, every time, and it just wastes energy each time, or, you know, whatever. I have difficulty conceiving of the worldview that says I can only do this physical action. There might be excuses for a, a spell-like action, but I can only do this physical action um, once before I take at least a couple seconds to take a breath in a short rest, which you know basically doesn't cost you anything. It just gets rid of a card at random. You don't have to spend a turn or anything like that. It's not even really a rest. It's just a recovery um, of your cards. So. That I find kind of disturbing. I find the scenarios, the individual scenarios, the way they end, um, you reach a scenario condition, which is to kill a certain number of monsters or whatever, and then it just ends. And it's not like you've chased the monsters away. You have enough energy to run out of there and escape. Um, there's no character death. There's an option for the character death. Uh, there's no... If the whole party dies, they're not all eaten or anything like that. If... Um, if you fail in a scenario, there's no cost if you're going to fail in the scenario to all getting knocked out and, you know, one would presume eaten by the monsters or whatever, uh, and deciding to, as compared to deciding to say, you know what, discretion's the better part of valor, we'll withdraw and come back. There's no, no disadvantage to that. Now, there is an option which allows you to have permanent character deaths uh, where you don't survive if you're beaten up beyond a certain point. You're left on the board and can be attacked still, uh, and which could be a real problem in some scenarios where you're supposed to run through and try to get to things. The thing is, though, the game's not designed to handle that kind of, uh, that kind of rolling. So the balance is set up so that it's very, very close in each scenario, at least for me. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and the, um, the modification isn't strong enough to cover some of the other uh, coincidental effects that come into play with that. So again, you know, if you're able to run, if there's a scenario where you're able to run through it and you're trying to get to a goal at the end of the scenario and just basically fight your way through or delay a certain amount of time or whatever, the fact that there are party members who are left behind getting eaten is a problem. You know, these are characters who are then going to be dead and you have a much, much heavier penalty. And also the simple fact that the scenarios are closely balanced as it stands and that you will be very likely to be losing characters in every scenario if uh, if simple knockout basically means death. So that that I all find, that I find all very problematic. Um, all that said, you know, there's an intriguing system. There's a, a definitely an interesting amount of thought and 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 decision making in terms of. You have to give up this to do this, you know, uh, and trying to optimize how your cards are going to work for you in the given situation to the extent that you understand it. I'm almost out of matter. Um, I can see why people do like that part of it. Uh, the only problem is 
there's way too much game. <laughs> you know, I would feel a little bit better about this if it was a 60 or $80 game uh, that came with a lot less and that didn't try to have the campaign side effects. Why? Because I feel like um, this was trying to do something more but didn't really try, you know? It, it, it sold as something more, and it doesn't try, it really make an effort to be that something more from what I can see. So my biggest gripe, and, and my most realistic one, uh, you know, most, broad, most broadly affecting, is that the campaign part of it just doesn't work quite well. It, it doesn't provide as much as it should. Something like Dragon Holt, um, which I also did more recently, that gives you a nice little storyline that all fits together and all works, you know? And it gives you more story than this does. Um, this really doesn't give you a lot in the way of uh, story to build on. Um, it doesn't even give you pieces that you can kind of make up uh, and fill in the gaps with very nicely. It just, it's sort of like... Uh, It reminds me of Fafner and the Grey Mouser, where each thing is completely unlinked to any other uh, story that's involved. Uh, it's not what I want. You know, I want something that gives me a building up and, 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 and a real um, sense of achievement at the end of it. And so far, it's giving no hint of that. Again, I haven't made it through. I feel, though like it's failed at that completely. Um, I feel like a lot of money was spent on components for this as opposed to um, spending it on the development of that campaign side. A very clever, you know, the characters probably balanced, probably very cleverly designed, a lot of effort put into that I assume to make each combat work in a certain way. But there are other games that I feel do the same kind of thing. It's not something I really like. It's kind of the problem. You know, Mage Knight gives me a headache to play. This also, the decision making, it's too hard. I would actually rather have something that didn't have that kind of more modern, complex decision making. Um, I especially would like it because games that are designed to model a reality a vision of reality tend to be simpler than these card-based type, you know, clevernesses, and they tend to reflect that reality fairly well, you know. So something like um, the Hero Quest tends to give you a more believable RPG type feel, uh, flavor, uh, something that maps better to the reality. Uh, so this gives you, you know, this gives you a clever abstract game puzzle with uh, a thematic element to it. And I use thematic there. Be if you're at all familiar with me, when I use the word thematic, it means that, yeah, I don't think it qualifies as that higher level, which is to some extent mapping to the reality. It's not. It's window dressing. It really is. <laughs> Even though this is a game all about dungeon exploring and everything, it still feels like window dressing to me. Um, it's more about the abstract of making making the calculations with these cards and trying to optimize them than it is about uh, about actually, uh, you know, trying to represent the kind of situation that the game is intended or appears to be intended to represent which I find very disappointing. Um, but that's me. Uh, I'm sure that there are a lot of people, obviously, who love the game, and I kind of knew better before I bought it. I had played one scenario of it and kind of said to myself, eh, I don't really like the combat system too much. I don't feel, you know, but not playing it solo, it's harder you know, when I play something opposed, it's harder to tell. Is this actually representing something? Um, I knew that I didn't really like the thinking involved in the cards, but now I'm seeing it's not really as heavily representative as it should be. Um, and then the real 
nail in the coffin for this to me so far is that the campaign just doesn't seem to be much of anything. That was the one thing I was expecting um, to be somewhat more clever than it is, especially given that, you know, hey, you're going to destroy the components and everything for it. Not that you have to, but um, certainly the stickers and everything are built to make the game playable once. You know, even, even the removable stickers don't really remove well. They kind of damage the board. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Um, other people, you know, I'm sure have their wood about it. I just don't. Cheers.